There's not going to be anything, though, Doctor, as effective as uh, all of them vote. That's right. That'll get you a message that all the eloquence in the world won't bring, because uh, the fellow will be coming to you then instead of you calling him. And it's very interesting, Mr. President, to notice that the only state that you didn't carry in the South, the South of the state, have less than 40% of the Negroes registered to vote. It's very interesting to notice that. I think the president of the University of Texas in a recent article brought this out very clearly uh, so it demonstrates that uh, it's so important to get Negroes registered to vote in large numbers in the South and it will be this coalition of the Negro vote and the moderate white vote that will really make the new South. That's exactly right. I think it's very important that we not to say that we're doing this uh, and we not do it just because it's Negroes and whites, but we take the position that every person born in this country, when it reaches a certain age, uh, that he have a right to vote, just like he has a right to fight, and uh, that we just uh, extend it, whether it's a Negro, whether it's a Mexican, or who it is. And number two, I think that... Uh, uh, we don't want special privilege for anybody. We want equality for all, and we can stand on that principle. But I think if you can uh, contribute a great deal by getting your leaders and you yourself taking very simple examples of uh, discrimination, where a man's got to memorize a uh, Longfellow, whether he's got to quote the uh, uh, the uh, first uh, uh, ten amendments are he's got to uh, tell you what uh, amendment 15, 16, 17 is and then ask them if they know and show uh, what happens and uh, uh, some some people don't have to do that but when a negro comes in he's got to do it and if we can just repeat and repeat and repeat I don't want to follow Hitler but he had a, he had a he had an idea that if you just take a simple thing and repeat it often enough, uh, even if it wasn't true, why people accept it. Well, now this is true. And if you can find the worst condition that you run into in Alabama, Mississippi, uh, or Louisiana, or South Carolina, where, uh, well, I think one of the worst I ever heard of is the president of the school at uh, Tuskegee or the head of the government department there or something, being denied the right to cast a vote. And if you just take that one illustration and get it on radio and get it on television and get it on uh, in the pulpits, get it in the in the meetings, get it every place you can, uh, pretty soon the the fellow that didn't do anything but follow drive a tractor will say, well, that's not right, that's not fair. And then that will help us on what we're going to shove through and in. And if we do that, we will break through as uh, it'll be the greatest breakthrough of anything, not even except in this 64 Act. I think the greatest achievement of my administration, I think the greatest achievement in foreign policy, I said to a group yesterday, was the passage of the 1964 Civil Rights Act. But I think this will be bigger because uh, it'll do things that even that 64 Act couldn't do.